Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to the videos of the paid request. It's time for Bronson. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, reactions, commentaries, whatever it may be, PayPal is usually the best bet or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Blades of Glory from 2007. Starring Will Ferrell, stars John Heater, you have Craig T. Nelson in the film. Pretty much it's about these two guys who are figure staters, being very successful. One's the prim and proper one, played by Jimmy Heater. One's more of the rebel, played by Will Ferrell. They compete, they get a tie for the gold, but because they're fighting with each other, they get banned. Their medals get taken away. It's about three and a half years later. Whether it leads to another, Trey T. Nelson from Pulted Guys from the TV show Coach, he gets the idea. Well, wait a minute. Well, actually, he doesn't have the idea first, but ultimately he, these, he coaches the two. Why don't you be a team? And, of course, the humor comes in where it's a male-male team, where it's usually it's a male-female for pair Fidrestein team. And, you know, kind of a lot of the jokes that would come about that, where, were they gay or not? You know, that type of thing. <clears throat> now, these were from first-time directors. Will Ferrell, he's a guy that I'm kind of off and on with, meaning there's some of, some of his films I don't mind. Talladega Nights, I actually liked Land of the, Law, of the Lost, because I don't know nothing about the TV show. Not a fan of Elf. Not a fan of... Not really a fan of Anchorman. Really enjoyed The Other Guys. That film. This one I could deal with it because he's trying to be a rebel. So he's trying to have a bit more of a lower voice. And not so much the screeching Will Ferrell that you would see in other movies. John Heater. That guy was popular for like 15 minutes because of Napoleon Dynamite. And you don't really hear about him anymore. And I like Napoleon Dynamite, but I know he was in a couple other films. School for Scoundrels being one. What was it? Uh, the Bench Warmers. I think the last time I saw him was that last Tremors film. The, the one where they killed off Burt Gummer, Michael, Michael Gross's character. Tremors Shrieker Island. Definitely killed that franchise. Right, you just say it never needed a franchise, but that's a whole other thing. But yeah... Yeah, I don't mind John Heater, but I think a lot of people looked at him and they just kept waiting for Napoleon Dynamite to come out, so... He just never became that big star that other people did. Will Arnett is also in the film. So like I said, John Heater is more elegant. He... Uh, Stating's a little orphan awesome as the people televising the event or showcasing and explain to the viewer what kind of person he is. While Will Ferrell is more the cocky, rebellious one, he comes out figure state, stating to the song, Stroke me, stroke me, the ladies love him. I will say Will Ferrell and John here, they aren't too bad against each other. When you get out of my face, oh no, I'll go get inside your face. Get out of my face, I'll get inside your face. Like, they work fairly well together. And, like I said, one thing leads to another, they get into it, they do their figure stating, different styles. A lot of the jokes, and throughout the film, is John Heater thinking, people thinking he's a girl, people thinking he's feminine, all that stuff. So they tie, and they get tipped out after the fight. Three and a half years later, Will Ferrell is skating for this, I forget what, it's a show where he's put on a costume, acting like a wizard for kids, but he gets drawn to at one point he pukes and the kids of course get pissed at him for it. Meanwhile, John Heater is dealing with states, and he's putting the laces on too tight. He's like, okay, fine, just go in the back. 
He has a hardcore obsessed fan played by Nick Swardson. I'm not a fan of Nick Swardson. Uh, if there's a guy I like even less than Rob Schneider, it's Nick Swardson. Anytime I see him, I go, oh, no, I just not. I'm not a Nick Swardson guy. He just comes off as desperately annoying. Not a fan of this guy. Like I said, I would rather watch Rob Schneider than this guy. And he comes up with the idea of why you guys, why you become a pair of figure skaters, you and someone else. That's not against the, the rules are for banning of solo figure skating. The figure skating scenes are fairly well done. Yeah, once in a while there's some CG manipulation, but overall, it's nicely showcased and choreographed. It's filmed in a way, so it's not confusing. A lot of nice wide shots. So I guess if you're really hardcore into figure skating, I'm not, but I respect the, the craft. I mean, it's not the cutting edge, but you know I respect the, the showcase by the steers throughout and the doubles, and even some of the stuff John Heater and Will Ferrell had to do on their own. This is not an easy thing to do. And like I said, the, the two guys, when they work together, they they work, they have decent chemistry. I see you got fat. I see you still look like a 15-year-old girl, but not hot. And, you know, sometimes there's some moments that made me chuckle, like Will Ferrell getting some certain phrases wrong, and like he says, you know, the night is when the, it's the darkest for me, and the Johnny is like, that's when it's darkest for everyone, moron. Well, not for Alaskans or, or dudes who wear night vision goggles. That was so out of place and out of the blue, I kind of did, I will admit, chuckle at that. And, I mean, some of the jokes are pretty obvious, but, like, when they go out figure skating, they're doing these poses that look very flamboyant. Like, Will Ferrell's got to lift John Heater, and he's holding him up in the air, but he's holding him up by his crotch. And Will Ferrell's like... Or they're holding each other upside... One's holding the other upside down, so it looks like they're standing 69 and... So it's very obvious, but I, I think the reactions by Will Ferrell being a little bit more subtle than usual made it work. And Plus, I like that they used this song, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, from Aerosmith. And I said, the figure scene, for the most part, fairly well choreographed and it looked a lot practical. I mean, yeah, there's a one maneuver at the very end that's very hard to do. There's CG manipulation there, but that's... I thought manageable, that was understandable. But it looked like for the most part they did a lot of it practical or if they worked with effects. They didn't seem too out of place most of the time compared to a lot of films in 2007 in that era. It pretty much is them getting through some things in order to get to the higher upper echelon. Like, they had to win that to be able to fully compete. They did win it. Their rivals is his brother and sister pair called Fairchild. One of them is Will Arnett. Uh, they're our bad guys. And then the third sibling, she becomes sort of the love interest of John Heater's character. It, this is one of those films, I know for like 10 minutes I've just been trying to get through the plot because it's not really a whole lot of plot to talk about. It's really just get to the point of, this was, I've seen this film before, it was alright, I still think it's alright, it's fairly short, at like 90 minutes long, uh, John Heater and Will Ferrell, I thought they play the roles fairly decently, like I say, Will Ferrell isn't so much screeching, him trying to be a bit more of the tough guy, rebel guy, I felt like it at least a bit of a different change of pace compared to other Will Ferrell characters. 
always trying to be like the steer guy or the oh my god I'm a kid you know big kid type of guy this one like I said was less annoying John Heater I thought handle I, I don't mind John Heater so it's nice to see him in there and this was a success this is one of the few films he was in that was successful this and then Napoleon Dynamite bench warmers might have made a little bit of money I don't know uh, I can't be sure about that, but it's one of those films that's just hard to talk about as a review. It's it was sporadically interesting. It moved at least a decent enough pace, so it didn't feel like a slog to just sit through. The two leads I didn't mind. A lot of times the jokes are very obvious. I'm actually surprised a decent amount of critics liked it. I figured they would bash it because of that reason. It's figure stating, guys, figure stating in a pair, so there's going to be gay, 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 you know, that they don't use the word gay. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's because, like, there's a lot of hints of it, of course, but there's nothing that mean or cruel about it either in terms of that type of humor as it doesn't belittle anything or any sexuality or anything Craig Tim Nelson I like him as an actor it's cool to see him in here as a bigger in a bigger role here's the coach at one point trying to get the two leads to do the Iron Lotus which is this crazy maneuver that he had in his head a long time ago and tried in North Korea and it's this maneuver where one throws the other up and they do like a cartwheel, but then accidentally cuts someone's head off. And so like Will Ferrell's trying to do it, but he's cutting off the head of the dummy. And this one, like this moments it did make me smirk and, and chuckle, like John Heater standing in, in a room filled with dummy heads from all the stuff Will Ferrell's screwed up and cutting the dummy's head off. And when Will Ferrell's like, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. And just the, the image of just all these dummy heads and camera rising up to John Heater's face. I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, like there's a bit where Will Arnett is chasing Will Ferrell. And then they're doing all these nice skating maneuvers. But then when they get inside, they still got the skates on and... They're trying to maneuver on it, so they're trying to maneuver on escalators and upstairs and just the opposite of finesse compared to how they were on the steaming before. You know, the, the finale when they're doing their maneuvers in order to, to win and they have the Flash Gordon theme playing. Nice song choices, I'll say that. Because I, I like the Aerosmith song. The Flash Gordon theme by Queen is classic, so... It kind of hit the the right buttons for me in terms of music. I mean, I'm not a fan of the song Stroke Me. But, again, Aerosmith and Queen. Hard to go wrong with that. And like I said, if you take out the end credits, it's only an hour and 26 minutes long. The love story between John Heater and the girl, it was eh, nice and sweet enough. But it didn't overstay its welcome. So it wasn't like a third of the movie just about that. But enough there to be, okay, you know, it seems like a little sweet theme between the two. You know, John Heater's not trying to do too much of his Napoleon Dynamite persona. So it's not like he's just trying to do an impersonation of that. I, I guess in a weird way, it was kind of harmless and an all right decent time waster that you know you know, I'm watching I'm like okay they didn't did some chuckles out here did some decent maneuvers choreography with the figure skating and a couple good songs and the movie's over and then you don't really remember it later on that's one thing I'll say is that Blades of Glory is not really a film people talk about remember and it did make a good chunk of money so I guess this is an example of one of those movies where yeah it might have been a hit 
but it didn't really have a life afterward. Just again, when was the last time someone even brought this movie up? Even if they're talking Will Ferrell movies. And I'm actually kind of surprised it wasn't a sequel because it was a decent sized hit, but I don't know. Maybe they rightfully saw, you don't really need one, there's not really a desire for a sequel. And I think they had they made the right decision on that. So it was goofy, it was silly, but it was a easy mood to digest. And you know, the villains, they were it, it was entertaining for what it needed to be. And I've seen a lot, lot worse movies. So, I'm sorry this is a discombobulated review, but it's kind of one of those movies that if you watch the trailer, you watch the clips, it kind of speaks for itself. Uh, you know, if you want a goofy, silly comedy, like I said, it doesn't overstay its welcome. Hour and 26 minutes, boom, the end credits start. I could do without Nick Swordson. Not all the jokes work. Sometimes it, it kind of makes you go, is this trying to be just a one note joke? Oh, is it funny? Two guys? Uh, but his idea is not too cruel or too mean on that. Again, not all the jokes work. Like Will Ferrell saying, we, we have one song we should be using. It's my hump. My lovely lady. What's it? My lovely lady hump. It's going to get people going. My lovely lady hump. I thought they could have done more to showcase them bonding with each other. Like, there's little bits there, but maybe a little bit more. Like, there's a bit where Will Ferrell is showing his tattoos, explaining, like, these are all the female figure steers he got with. I mean, maybe a little bit more to really buy to the fact that these guys become friends and, and bond with each other. I don't know specifically what so I, I know this is a boring ass review I just it's one of those movies I just didn't know what to say it's okay it was an alright okay film it was a time waster uh, maybe like one of those films that you picked up for a dollar or two on DVD and a few years later you go I don't remember that film let me check it out again okay yeah, yeah. and then you don't remember it a few weeks later but you know it wasn't awful or anything so that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.